G'day guys, welcome back to another video. It's been a while between videos, but uh, there's a lot going on. Uh, this one, we are going to do a little review and comparison of the new Ditex PDS500G pressure transducer. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just test it on this car that we've got in, and then we're gonna do a little comparison against the uh, WPS500 Pico's version, and see, you know, pros and cons of both. Um, this car, this isn't a diagnosis video, this car has actually been diagnosed already. It does have a restricted exhaust, it's got a, it's got a blocked cat. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to set up the Ditex PDS500G. I'll show you the kit first. And once we have a look at the kit, we'll get it on the car and we'll um, set it up on Pico and we'll, we'll run it up and see what readings we get. Alright guys, this is the kit. This is the advanced kit and as you can see, we have got our sensor here. A 500 psi sensor with a range switch that can switch between 200 psi and 500 psi so all you have to do is set up your custom probes for that we've got our foster 2 fitting that we fitted there already it doesn't come with that fitting you've got to put that on yourself uh, it comes with our spark plug adapters our thread adapters it comes up with a grounding clip that you connect um, and a few other little adapters as well and our main cable because as you know, if you don't know that this actually runs on vehicle battery power directly off the battery with a step down inside it internally so you don't have to worry about charging it and not charging it so that's pretty much the the basic kit um, really good unit particularly if you're mobile so you don't have to worry about charging at all um, we really like this product and you know I had the PDS 500A and, and that was a great tool and I, I gave that away because um, you know I got to 1,000 subscribers and I was really happy and I wanted to do something to give back to our viewers here um, so I ended up getting this full kit for the um, for the mobile van anyway um, the one thing to note is the spark plug adapter here as you can see it is solid um, which is a bit of a problem particularly you know if you're trying to get down somewhere underneath a manifold or sideways and you need a flexible tube Ditex have realised that and they're now bringing up a, uh, a flexible tube for sale or as an additional option or I don't know whether it's going to be standard in the upcoming kits but um, that was the only downside otherwise um, well I've already got a PDS uh, I've already got a WPS 500 so I've got a flexible hose there so if I need to do it in the shop I've got that one to use anyway so let's get it connected up to the car and let's get a few readings and see how it looks all right guys, we're set up here. We've got the little beauty jockey strap there that's gonna hold it there and stop it moving around. We connected the battery on one side and we are connected to the Pico on the other side. So let's go and start the car up. We'll start the scope and we'll see what readings we get. All right, we're running. We're getting a reading over there. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of rev. Let's go see what we get on the screen. All right, so we're on the screen. Let's go back. All right, firstly, let's have a look at the actual idling pressure. We can see that's about uh, 120 PSI there. Uh, let's go forward and see when we rev it. Before we do that, let's have a look at the exhaust back pressure. At idle, it's already about 3 psi, which, you know, from rule of thumb, you, you probably wouldn't want anywhere near that uh, under load, 2, 3 psi, absolute max. So let's go forward to when we revved it. Gave it a bit of a rev there. We can see the pressure rises to around 20 psi. Obviously, that's proportional to how much you put your foot down on the accelerator. So that clearly shows us that we've got 20 psi of back pressure there. And great reading. Pretty nice looking waveform. Let's go back to over here. We'll see. Just get a bit of a zoom in and just see how clear it is. As you can see, it's pretty well defined. And this is on the 500 psi mode, um, so yeah, it looks looks great. Pretty happy with that. 
So if you did have an engine with a high compression reading or you're doing a diesel, then obviously you would press this button, take it back to the 500 PSI mode, and then you would get a uh, obviously a larger reading over 200 PSI on the scope. So it just depends how much detail you want and what sort of engine you're working with to determine how much uh, pressure you're actually going to need, whether you need that button or not. So similar range button like the WPS, uh, obviously only between 200 and 500. So nonetheless, still a good range, you know, diversity to have. Alrighty, we got the WPS 500 connected now. So let's do the same test and see what readings we get as a comparison. See, we're running there. Just give it a rest. Sounds horrible. Let's go over and have a look. Let's go back to... Obviously we're off the screen there a little bit. We'll just uh, bring that up a little bit. Firstly, let's go over here where we're idling. Let's just bring the cursor down and see what we're reading there. So, very similar. 113 PSI, 114 PSI. Changes a little bit as we go, depending on, you know, if the idle speed is raising a little bit. So, very similar to the Ditex. That's great. Let's go to where we are revving it. And look at our back pressure. So, we get our back pressure. Around that mark there, around 20 psi, almost exactly the same as the Ditex transducer. So, obviously, like I said before, that's subjective to how much you foot, put your foot on the accelerator. We try to do it similar to what we did before, and as you can see, the readings are very similar. So, um, let's get up. Let's just get up a uh, close up of one cycle, and we just see how it looked compared to the other. As you can see, it's almost it's almost exactly the same. It's very similar. The Ditex is, is obviously great quality. It's a, it's a little bit cheaper than the Pico WPS. It's, it's you know, it, obviously the choice is subjective there. You know, if you're a Pico fan, then you, you've got a WPS 500. If you're not, then you can look at other options. But um, yeah, that, that's, yeah, there's, there's not much else to it. It's very good quality, very good quality unit. So let's go over to the car and do a bit of a summary. All right, guys, this is where we're at. So as you can see from the waveforms, they're both really great quality. Uh, the Ditex unit definitely compares pretty well quality-wise and reading-wise. Um, you saw that the, uh, the actual figures weren't far off, and we've got to remember there's slight you know, differences when the engine's warmed up, the idle speed. Um, if there's going to be minor PSI differences, what we're really looking at is the, the waveform display and, you know, I, I guess we're going to have a little bit of a tolerance of, you know, plus or minus 5%, something like that. But um, great quality unit, uh, the Ditex unit, it's, uh, def it's obviously a little bit cheaper than the, the Pico unit, which I did say before. The biggest advantage of this is that it runs off vehicle battery power. Whereas with the WPS unit, we've got to make sure that it's charged. So this is why we ended up buying this unit. We bought this for our mobile van because the last thing we want to do in our mobile van is, is drive out to a job that's very far away, have the Pico unit not charged accidentally, whether you forget or whether something happens. This unit, we know for sure, if the car's running, if the battery's good, we're going to be able to use this anytime regardless. So I think, uh, you know, cost effective wise, this is probably a good choice. So it just depends on what you're doing and what you're wanting. If you want everything the same, then you know, you're know you a Pico guy, then obviously you're gonna get a Pico. Um, if you're looking for a bit of a change, you want something with a, a quality unit that you can run off battery power and possibly use on, on many different scopes. You know, Obviously you just gotta set up custom probes accordingly. Um, then this is a, a great unit and you, you can't look past it. You know, Ditex is a really quality company as well. Um, if you've seen a lot of my videos, you know that I've got a lot of Ditex products. I've got the Carscope Viso and I've also got the Ditex Relative Compression Tester. 
Um, great support, great products. The the guys, if you have any issues, the guys are great to deal with. Um, if you're looking, if you're in Australia and you're looking for any Ditex products, then contact uh, Endeavor Tools. So Google search Endeavor Tools. I'll put the link in the description, and they sell all the Ditex products. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions or you want to see any other tests, then let us know. This was just a quick video, a, a quick comparison between the two, just to start, show you how it reads and, you know, comparison with the Pico. So hopefully uh, you get a little bit out of that and you can, uh, if you're looking at this product, then you can make a decision. So thanks for watching, guys. Much appreciated.